Welcome back everyone, yet again to the corner of my kitchen. We stand here yet again to answer what we clearly haven't found an answer for yet. Are the overly sponsored products that you see in ads all over the internet actually worth it? We've done a number of these videos on this channel as well as on my other channel as well, go check it out. Because I feel like we get so many of these ads and so I think it's really interesting testing them out, just seeing what the fuss is about. So make sure if you haven't already to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe so you don't miss out on new videos here every single weekend. And uh, let's dive into these products, shall we? And the first product that I bought, I actually asked you guys on Instagram some of the products that you guys have seen and overwhelming <laughs> the number one product that I saw most recently has to be this one. Sometimes you knew the name of the brand, sometimes it was just what it is and that is the Portable Blender by Blendjet. Or it is the Blendjet, or the brand's Blendjet. Doesn't matter. But this is a portable cordless blender. It's supposed to be super, super powerful, and it's supposed to last, I think, up to 15 blends before you need to charge it again. Easy to clean, apparently, really quiet, and um, this is what it looks like. I got the red, but they have like a bunch of different colors. And honestly, I have seen this as a product you guys have been talking about for a while now, and I never really bought it because I honestly, I don't understand the market. Like I couldn't think of a time where I wouldn't blend something in advance and then drink it. You know? But I figured the best way to put this to the test is to actually compare it to that of an actual blender. Understanding that this is, you know, kind of its own standalone, it's not going to be the exact same as a blender, but they do state on like the packaging and everything that it is a really powerful motor. It's supposed to be blending everything from the leafy greens, the fresh frozen everything. And so because it states that it has this like, what is it called? Patented turbojet technology. I want to see how it compares to my like big blender over here. So we're going to make my favorite thing that I make in a blender, which is green juice. And I, <laughs> it makes me sound so healthy. <laughs> I genuinely, here's my PSA for this green juice. I genuinely do not like any smoothies, any green juices. It's just, it's just not my thing. I just, I don't like the consistency. I don't like the texture. I don't like the taste. Blech. However, this particular concoction that um, my mother-in-law actually introduced me to, I really like. And so it's something that, we're, especially this past like two weeks, oh my gosh, everyone got sick. It was a thing. We were making a ton of green juice. So I figured the best way to kind of test these out is to blend up some green juice in both of them. We're just gonna see what happens. <laughs> and I guess first, before I do anything, I should probably wash this. That's a good idea, Rachel. Do not put your hands inside your blend jet. <laughs> yeah. Safety first, people. Okay, I'm gonna wash it. All right, so I got <laughs> big blender. Little Blenda. I feel like she's a Betty. And I have the ingredients, some of them um, chopped up here, which I'll go over because you need to make this, it's so good. And let's get the remainder of the ingredients. So let's do this. First step, spinach. And then between the two of these, I have two green apples, one lemon, one whole cucumber, and uh, a little chunk of ginger. Oh, I have to cut it up the right way. This is not the right size for Betty here. Can I just break it? I don't want to get out a knife. <laughs> yeah, really stuffed that in there. Am I even gonna have room? Really stuffing and wedging stuff in here. And then of course, give me a little pineapple. And then orange juice. Are you, are you leaking? No. No, 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 no. It's dry here, so let's see what happens. Also how loud it is. Well, you demolished that spinach. Good for you, Blendjet. Also, you're leaking. Okay, let me try and, some, sometimes things get stuck in this guy too. Let's um, try and like get the ingredients down there, huh? While you're quiet, I'll give you that. You're gonna make me squish all this ingredient stuff down. Unbelievable. Like it's apple. This isn't like, this isn't difficult. It says don't overfill. Did I overfill this? Maybe, I don't know. Well, let me um, dial it back then. 
I took out some stuff. Okay, so maybe I just overfilled that. Can I add in the rest of my stuff though? Like it's not a lot, it's just like, like two bits here. Come on, you could do it. It is like continues to leak though. And I have those arrows lined up perfectly. So in terms of blended, like it seems to have done a, a pretty good job actually, but I tend to like really blend it. So let's keep going. Now let's blend up this guy. So let's try a taste test. And obviously, obviously these are two very different machines with very different price points and I get that, but this is the, uh, this is what I have as a comparator. Mm. I'm just gonna blend this one more time. It's very congealed. It's all over me. Spoiler alert, I don't like it, but we've already made it this far, so let's see what it tastes like. In terms of consistency, mmm, it's not looking good, friends. Oh, remember how I said I don't like the consistency of green juice? That's why. Full on solid pieces of apple and uh, pineapple in there. No. Like it's, it's not close, but it's not even that it's not close. It's just, this isn't drinkable and it's leaking. So what would I use this for now that I have it? Margaritas on a beach, end of list. Don't think it's worth it. Don't think it works well. And um, it's just a, an absolute mess. No. Okay, now I wanna talk about a product and I have a story on it specifically because I was very proud of myself. I like went out and found a whole bunch of different products and I like ordered them all. I was like, great, they're gonna get here in advance and by the time I'm like ready to film them, everything's gonna be there. Cause this is, this is usually the issue is there's usually one or two products that just like haven't come in yet. So I was like, I'm on the ball. <laughs> and then I realized when it arrived that um, I'm an idiot because it's popcorn. Popcorn's gonna go bad, Rachel. And it is by the brand Eatable. And it's not just any popcorn, it is gourmet. And it's gourmet because it's actually infused with alcohol. And they have a whole bunch of different ones. They have tequila, whiskey, wine, just like a ton of different options. This is a small company. They make them in small batches. They actually sift through to get rid of all the hard kernels before they bag them, which I think is, that's a very important touch because nobody likes those. But I got three different flavors. I got pop the salt and tequila. Poppy Caesar and Whiskey on the Pops. Names are really cute. Actually, the packaging itself is also really like very classy. And so because I got this like a number of weeks ago, I actually brought it over to my parents' house because I was like, my dad's gonna really like these. Um, we should all test them together. It doesn't smell like a Caesar. No, it doesn't. It looks like caramel corn actually. But it has, it has vodka in it. Well, we'll see about that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, a little tomato. Too. Hi, mom. <laughs> it's good. The end tastes a little Caesar-y. It does. It's a little bit of a spicy. It does, it's got spice in it. It, it almost has a little bit of that um, celery That's what sauce. it is, yeah. okay. I can't smell anything in that one. It's definitely got... Tequila? It could have, yeah, because you have to let the air kind of... In the bag, you oh. can't just... I'm, not, I'm not a connoisseur. It. Gonna... I feel like I'm talking the popcorn at me. <laughs> Hello! <laughs> Stop playing with your food. <laughs> oh, that's it's good. A, yeah, it's good. It's almost a little buttery. Yeah, yeah. it's caramelly? Yeah. A little? All right. Whiskey. This one, they're, they're both caramel. The tequila one and the whiskey one are both caramel, but they smell different. Tequila smells more caramelly. Here's the whiskey one. Oh, I got, I got the whiskey taste. Do you taste it? Taste it's it. not until the end. That is wild. Is this, is it, 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 it tastes like whiskey, Christopher. Now it is are caramel you, too. This okay. is important. Are you gonna be able to drive home after this though? That's, that's, oh, I'll have to wait a while. <laughs> it's not until the end, and then you start to get this like note of whiskey. It's um, smooth, it's like a rye, it's not like a scotch. Yeah, it, I see what you mean, it's there, it's subtle. It's, but like at the same time, it was more than like, try the tequila one. Yeah. I did not taste any tequila in that. Yeah. Which makes me sad, because I really like tequila. <laughs> and nothing but caramel in that. It's just caramel, right? Nada enchilada. Okay, last one. This is the Caesar one, or Bloody Mary. That's different. It's a nice one, right? The tomato comes through for sure. That one I think is my favorite. That's the best one by far. Like I would eat that just like as as a popcorn. Absolutely. Oh, and I love a Caesar. Like I really like this one. Actually, you know what? This is still really good popcorn. This is not, like I was worried it was gonna get stale, 
Not at all. But yeah, 10 out of 10. This would be actually a really good gift because it's kind of unique and it's also like a fun thing to taste test with like a bunch of people. I think this would be good. Mm-hmm. I like it. Now we're gonna venture into a product that I know well, but this specific angle of the category, I know nothing about at all. And that is the world of coffee concentrates. There are a couple of different brands that are popping up here and there, but the one I've seen the most is by a company called Javi. They are microdose coffee concentrates. And basically one teaspoon equals 60 milligrams of caffeine. You kind of pour it into whatever liquid that you want and it's gonna make you a coffee. They have a couple of different flavors. They also have plain. So I got, which is my favorite, I love peppermint mocha. And I get so mad because every single year it's the same thing. It's there for Christmas and then it's gone forever. Well, until November again. <laughs> so I bought the peppermint mocha one in hopes that it is both pepperminty and mocha-y because I will drink this year round. So I guess in order to test this properly, we need to make this as a cup of coffee versus an actual cup of coffee. Ooh, and I have to show you guys what I got for Christmas this year because I don't have enough coffee-related brewing contraptions. Ta-da! Espresso. Let's do a little stormy -o. Stormy. <laughs> okay, let's see what this looks like. All right, it looks like really concentrated coffee. Oh boy. It's not syrupy at all. I thought it was gonna be like um, thick. I don't know why. <laughs> and I'm trying to be exact with my measurements here to follow their recipe. They want eight ounces of water. So that's what the concentrate looks like, just at the bottom there. And then we're gonna pour some hot water in. Ta-da, woo, so steamy. So let's taste test this then. I'm all so excited. I want to make this into like a peppermint mocha. That'd be good. Right? We need to taste test this first. It's gonna be so hot. It's gonna, it's gonna burn me. Do you want like a little bit of cream and sugar? No, I want to know what it tastes like. Okay, try a black. <laughs> I don't know how people drink it like this. I want to be that person, but I'm not. Kind of flat. Taste it versus this. Compare it apples to apples, like the game. I mean, that's a more flavorful coffee. I don't think this is bad though. No, 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 no. Like a bad, bad coffee. That's yeah, not it, bad. this is not bad coffee. Like if I didn't have coffee, I, I would drink that. Sure, oh, perfectly fine. Versus like go out to Tim Hortons, leave my house. Yeah, but it's, I mean, it's not, I don't know. Like I don't have the power to be like, oh, it's not nuanced and complex, but the, it's very flat. Like it's just kind of coffee. <laughs> Straight down the yeah. line. Okay. Okay. Well then I, I want to try this one then. I want to see what it smells like. Ooh. Strong alcohol smell, but. No, that smells pepperminty. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and but like mocha. peppermint and extract. I have my little milk frother thing over here. This is the best thing ever. And then I'm just going to pour concentrate into the milk. I'm gonna start with a teaspoon because a teaspoon's kind of like a espresso shot. Look how foamy that is. Oh, I'm so excited. Okay. And then we just pour it on top. Ta-da! I mean, it smells very pepperminty. Hmm, that is very weak. Christopher, you wanna taste this? The peppermint one? Yeah, I thought it would be stronger, but it's not. Spoiler alert. No, it doesn't taste like anything. Hold on, I'm gonna put another teaspoon in. Maybe I just like really strong coffee. You do. Bloop. It just feels like I'm just drinking milk. I know I'm not, it's just like that's what it feels like. Not a good latte. That's not a good latte. Maybe I was expecting it to be more sweet. I guess it doesn't have anything in it that's gonna make it sweet. It's just the flavor and then you sweeten it up yourself, I guess. But like, yeah, I'm not getting any of the mocha, certainly. No. It, but it, 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 it's just in the smell. I don't know. I was kind of hoping for more from this yeah, after know. all my research. I don't know. It seemed like such a cool idea. It's never going to be a fresh pot of coffee. No. And it's drinkable. And I think this would be good maybe for like iced more so. Maybe. If you've tried these before, let me know if that's what I need to be doing with this because I have them now. I could even see like a nice latte working. Yeah. Better. We'll keep it around for uh, summer. Yeah. Summer drinks. Okay, now I have to try something that's not kitchen related at all. And I wasn't even sure if I should include it or not, but I got it because I'm curious and I want to try it. 
It's a hula hoop. Specifically, it's one of those weighted hula hoops. Because again, uh, a lot of you guys had requested that I test this. Magnetic therapy hula hoop that won't fall. We'll see about that. <laughs> did I open it upside down? Ugh. I did. Mmm. So this is what it looks like. It has little extra scaly bits over here. And instructions. How am I supposed to put... How am I... What am I supposed to... I don't understand. Okay, hold on. Okay, okay, I put it on. Not quite though. You can see, definitely need more pieces. So they seem pretty easy to like fit into place. So that's good. Like that. And then when you need to get into it, you just like open up a section. This weighted thing is heavy. I may need to adjust that. It says that you can open it up because there are like a bunch of weights in here if you're finding it too heavy and you can adjust it. So um, that's for sure happening. But let's try it just, just because. Okay, let's see. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Anyone else just die there for a second? Okay, I don't know how tight this is supposed to be, but I don't wear tight clothes, so this will be new. Now do I just like, am I just supposed to hula hoop now? Mm -hmm. huh. No. Ow! <laughs> Ow! Is it too loose or is it too tight? This is just not helpful. I didn't learn much, but I apparently this can adjust. It says that you can make it shorter or longer depending on your fitness. Which way is supposed to be the easiest? I feel like if I try to make this tighter, I'm just, I'm gonna suffocate. Let's see. Okay, now I can't breathe, but maybe now I can hula hoop. <laughs> I'm gonna get bruises all over myself just from it like hitting me. Go. Okay, I think I figured it out. I think. I've been putting it up here because I thought it's supposed to go on your waist, but I think it's supposed to sit lower down and then you have to get it started. No, I just, I just want it. Huh? Ta-da! Okay. It's very loud and it's work. Again, I am not in shape, but uh, you saw how long I did that for and I'm out of breath. <laughs> it is no joke. Like I can't imagine trying to do that for, it said, don't do it for more than 30 minutes. And I was like, okay, got it. Let's see if I can do this for w one minute. Just, just one minute. You know what, not even one minute. Let me try 30 seconds. All right. Nope. two minutes. I was like, why is that not done? Oh, good for me. Beacon of health. New day, testing something for a different video. <laughs> My sister's here and she works out. And so I, I'm having her test out the, the hula hoop. <laughs> okay, let's, let's put it on. Like I want it to be up here. That's exactly what I did. Like I understand why you don't because like I can move my hips. Like my hips are what's gonna make it go. Like my waist does nothing, right? The hips, the hips, they don't lie. The hips don't lie. You ready? Yeah. I can't do it. No, no, do it again, do it again. Whip it. Now back and forth. Back and forth or all around? What, I mean like I had to go like this. Like back and forth, I found. But you like, you, you, you will get it. Yeah, and you all just circles. have to keep. You gotta, do, you gotta do circles. Yeah, and then you have to keep, keep it going. Oh, it's aggressive. You gotta do like aggressive hip movements. No, no, no. It should be better than that. Do it again. Maybe I gotta take one link off or something. Yeah, try taking a link off. Ooh. Oh, she's snug now. Squeezing the hip bones a bit, but let's give it a try. Yeah. Right. Like, why can't I do this? I don't. I don't know. Here, let me let me do it again. See, like I I had to watch Chris do it in order to figure it out. Why is Chris the best? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I like. I can feel it in my. Core. I'm tired now, aren't? Like yeah. when I'm hula hooping, I'm just like wee. But like with this, I need to be like, like you gotta flex basically the whole time. Like I want to see if my heart rate goes up. After how long? 
don't know. See if you can do it for like, well, I mean, like you could obviously clearly do it for 30 seconds. Can you do it for a minute? Probably. My resting heart rate is like 55. Okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna set a timer and you're gonna do it for a minute. We'll okay. see. Hold on, what was it? My heart rate's 110 now. 110 beats. after a minute? Yeah, beats per minute. Is that, is that good? Yeah. <laughs> like if I went and ran for a minute, I would expect my heart rate to come up something similar. Okay. So like, do you think this is like an actual, like reasonable exercise thing? Yeah, like, I guess. You don't sound convinced. I, like if I was gonna do this, I would do it like in between working sets or something to like keep my heart rate up. Ah, okay. If I'm doing squats or something, then my heart rate's already gonna be high, so I don't have to worry about this. But if I'm doing something that like, my heart rate's not gonna be that high, then like you would do a couple sets and then you could like do a minute of this to like jack your heart rate back up and then go back to what you're doing. Mm, interesting. Yeah. All right. Wow. That um that does work. It <laughs> that is effective. You can see why people like them so much though. Like that's pretty easy once I like figured out how to do it. But let me know if you've tried any of these products before. If you have them, if you like them, don't like them, leave me a comment down below if there are any other products that you've seen kind of floating around the internet that we should try next. And check out these videos on the side in case you have missed any. I hope you have a fantastic, fantastic weekend and I will see you guys all next week. Mwah.